This is the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. And it's only just begun. You know, we have the next few months where we're going to have to suffer through the constant lies of the Obama administration and the Obama campaign. And now another target after Mitt Romney unveils his running mate. Well, it's already the sunshine state, but things are really heating up on Tuesday. All eyes on Florida for a big primary, and Palin endorsed Sandy Adams looks to move on to November. We'll take a look at what Governor Palin has to say about Adams and her bid for another term. Also, we'll let you know how you can help Sandy Adams. Another big congressional race in Florida. Which Republican will get the chance to run against the woman conservatives have dubbed Debbie Downer? We'll talk with Karen Harrington, who hopes to claim victory Tuesday and then work on ousting the ultra-liberal Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Decorated Colonel Mike McAllister is here. The Senate candidate will talk about Agenda 21. And we extend a special thanks to Todd Palin and Bristol Palin. A very busy edition of the Palin Update, and in the leadoff spot, Karen Harrington, candidate for Congress in Florida's 23rd District, joining us. Primary day coming up on Tuesday, and you are running for the House, looking to win the GOP nomination and the honor of taking on really one of the faces of the far, far left, DNC Chair Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I know it's a long, long list, but just to set the stage here, Karen, can you tell us some of her more radical moves and stances over the years? Gosh, it is such a long list, but I'd have to say the ones that impact our district the greatest is the failed stimulus program uh, plan under the Obamacare, I mean, also as well as Obamacare. So the two things uh, that are failing us the greatest in this district is the uncertainty of the economy, and most secondly is most people in our district are deeply concerned with uh, health care options in the future. Incumbents are hard to beat, especially on the House level, but you feel her extremism has made her vulnerable. Are, are people sick of her act in Florida? Well, they certainly are. And when I ran against her two years ago as a first-time candidate and a business owner, um, we got almost 40% of the vote, but some of the mood there then was, well, the president needs a little more time, and Debbie's not so bad. So the greatest gift we've gotten this time is her being appointed to the DNC chair. So um, people are recognizing who she is, that she doesn't have any solution. She's full of rhetoric and talking points, and people are ready for a change, many Democrats as well. Now, as far as the Republican field, why are you the best suited to challenge this incumbent when it comes to November? Why should folks head there Tuesday and cast that ballot for Harrington? Well, I have a terrific name ID, first of all, from running two years ago. Uh, That says a lot when you run an election. You don't realize how important that is for people to get to know you um, over a a two-and-a-half-year period. Secondly, I have real-world experience being a business owner with my family for 38 years. Um, We know what it's like to to live that American dream, to start with nothing, to work hard, to employ about 100 people, and what it's like to fall under government taxes, regulations, our permitting fees, everything that's required to be successful. We understand it. uh, We get it. And uh, living here since I was five years old, what I want most from the person that represents me is someone who will take the will of the American people to Washington and not tote those party lines, but really go there to serve the American people. You mentioned you're a small business owner. You didn't build that, though, did you? Oh, no, definitely not. The government came along, (laughs) gave us everything we needed. In fact, I don't understand how my dad working three jobs for five straight years uh, to put our first down payment of $13,000 on our first place. I had to call him up after the president made that statement because I was certain that that must not have been what we did. But uh, we've worked really hard, and so have many other Americans, to try to create um, you know, a family business or you know, just put food on the table. And unfortunately, this president is so out of touch, and so is my opponent, Debbie. I keep hearing the word reformer to describe you. Uh, on the money there? Um, Yes, I I think you would say that because, um, you know, I've been an independent my whole life. I joined the Republican Party in 2010, and I did that because I needed to challenge someone like Debbie and get her out of office. So I always tell people that try to, 
you know, come after me that, oh, you haven't been a lifelong Republican. I said, no, I haven't. I've been a lifelong American and a conservative. And if the Republican Party is lucky enough, they'll be able to keep me, you know, as part of their party. But we've got to earn that respect back in the Republican Party. Is Wasserman Schultz sweating a little here, maybe a bit nervous? She's certainly spending money like she is. Oh, she is. And it's funny, just two years ago, I mean, I was a no-name uh, first-timer, and she spent almost $2 million. She's nervous. They're following me around to events. Uh, they're tracking where I am. Um, she she has a difficult time answering questions about me as her opponent, and if she thinks her seat is at risk, she understands what's happening, and uh, she's known that now for the last year. I mean, the country's in trouble. She is tied to Obama in every way, and especially down here in the Jewish community, they have a sense that she doesn't represent their values either. Are you that stark contrast to Wasserman Schultz that really will give voters a clear choice as opposed to some of your opponents who may not be conservative? Oh, I think definitely we have a very clear choice. I mean, other than us being two women, uh, both being mothers and cancer survivors, I think those are the only three things we have in common when it comes to a vision of America's future and what's the best way to get our country back on track, our economy going again. And I definitely am one that do, does not look to the government for solutions. I don't look to the government to create jobs. I look to the government to understand their role, which should be limited, and allow the people to flourish. That's why our nation is so great. So there is definitely a very strong contrast be between Debbie and I. You've had some impressive endorsements from pro-life and Tea Party groups. Is that groundswell of support helping? Oh, absolutely. Um, down here, I can tell you the Tea Party groups in South Florida, um, they're very strong. And, and like everybody knows, they're made up of independents, Democrats, and Republicans. Our parties are equally divided down here, people that are fed up. And uh, I'm so thrilled to have that swell of the grassroots movement. Uh, I'm very proud of my Susan B. Anthony um, you know, endorsement for pro-life, um, Michelle Bachman, Mark Levin, uh, just to name a few, I mean, uh, the endorsements are great. They show terrific momentum. But at the end of the day, Kevin, if I don't reach my voters and I don't raise money, then all of that is, is go gone by the wayside. So we work really hard to reach the voters and to raise money as well. Israel means a lot to you. Talk about how you will vote on issues related to our great friend in the Holy Land. Uh, Israel is an incredible thing, and I can tell you as a Christian, from a biblical standpoint, it means everything to me. If, you, if you're a Christian, you have a really understanding of the Bible. But not just that, I've grown up in South Florida in a very Jewish neighborhood where I was actually the minority. Where there was four families on a block of about 20 that weren't Jewish. So the Jewish people are my friends, my neighbors, my employees, uh, my doctors. And in every sense of the way, it, it's almost like having lived in Israel in a sense of the people. I have a real understanding of who they are and uh, how important Israel is. And I will do everything I can to support Israel and stand with them, but allow Israel to carve their own path for freedom, not to tell them what to do or when to do it. And I would want to continue the support of making Jerusalem the true capital of Israel, and I would vote to support building you know, our embassy there as we promised back in the 90s. You are also committed to securing our borders. Can you talk about that a little bit? You know, it's so disappointing to know that a country that's as great as ours is and we are a nation of immigrants that, for whatever reason, we would want to go around our laws. We are such a great nation because of the laws that we've created. And for people to want to come into this country to break that law and for us to have leaders in Washington or in states or local government that want to say, no, it's okay you broke that law. It's okay that you stay. I mean, you just you can't allow that to happen. We must secure our borders. We must protect our American citizens. And we must ask those that did not come here legally, uh, you know, that you didn't do it the right way. And as an employer, I can tell you, if we stop giving these people jobs and we come down harder on the employers, I think eventually over time, without us trying to reform immigration laws, because we already have those, I think many people will start to leave leave the country, you know, on their own. So it's it's incredible to me that we have to watch what happened in Arizona or any state that tries to stand up, identify, and then 
you know, process illegal immigrants. It's it's insane. And now our president wants to give those that are here illegal a two-year pass to allow them to stay to work, work, and take whose job? Americans? So we've definitely got to, you know, go to Washington and stop talking this talk and be afraid to make the hard choices uh, because people are afraid of getting reelected. We don't have to reform immigration. We have laws. There's no reform needed. You mentioned Michelle Bachman. She's a friend of the show. When you take a look at her and you take a look at Governor Palin, are there some lessons to be learned there? See some of the things they've gone through, the thick skin that both of those great women have. And I'm sure probably your best test is already going through this in 2010. But but do you take some things from people like Governor Palin and Representative Bachman? Oh, definitely. The I mean, they're two incredible women, not only to be out there in the public limelight, but sticking by your values. And, and it has to come from a strong family base. I mean, without my husband and my children, and I'm also a grandmother of two, we recognize as women with our protective nature what it is we have to fight for. And we're really comfortable in who we are and what we believe, and we know it's right and we know it's good. So we just take away, they're going to throw stuff at us, they're going to accuse us of things. I can only imagine what Debbie will come after me with this election cycle. But we know who we are. We're confident women. And no matter what they've had to go through, those two, they come out with a smile on their face and they come out fighting every time and they never back down. So what I learned from them is never be afraid to be who you are and stand for what you believe and don't let anyone intimidate you in any other way. Earlier this month, we saw that great silent majority come out in droves to support Chick-fil-A. Do you feel that great silent majority is ready to make some major noise in November as well? Absolutely. And the Chick-fil-A day was a great day for us. We rallied around Chick-fil-A down here in Florida. We saw the great response across the country. And like we told people that day, because we support traditional marriage doesn't mean that we're anti-gay. And for someone to be punished, a successful businessman, you know, for speaking his values under the First Amendment right is really why we supported, you know, going out there for Chick-fil-A. So, um, you know, these are important things as we move forward, not to be afraid to be a voice in America. And I think what happened in Wisconsin, once again, is another step. Uh, What America is saying and what they're doing in that voting box are two different things. And I think November, we will be successful in many races as well as the presidency. Karen, tell the listeners your website. Well, we got a couple different ones. And uh, we did this one in the beginning to have fun. It's FireDebbie.com. And that's what helped us grow this into a national campaign. We now have over 10,000 donors from all 50 states. And we also have KarenForCongress.com. So thank you so much. Wonderful. Karen Harrington, big vote on Tuesday in Florida. Best of luck to you. Thanks, Kevin. Hope to be back after the primary. The website's once again, folks, FireDebbie.com and KarenForCongress.com. That's Karen, F-O-R, Congress.com. Governor Palin recorded a robocall this past week for Sandy Adams. Hi, this is Governor Sarah Palin. In the race for Congressional District 7, there is one candidate who strongly believes in limited government and is willing to stand up for constitutional principles, and that's Sandy Adams. Sandy Adams served our country in the United States Air Force and spent 17 years protecting Central Florida families as a deputy sheriff. Sandy was a straight-talking conservative voice in Tallahassee, and now she serves in Congress as a member of the historic group elected in 2010 to change Washington. Sandy should stay there doing just that. Sandy Adams has never requested an earmark and led to charge for the largest cuts in government spending since World War II. Even my favorite newspaper, the New York Times, called her the toughest new member of Congress. Florida has a choice on August 14th, another big spending career politician or the conservative reformer, Sandy Adams. I ask you to vote for Sandy Adams for Congress on August 14th. Pay for by Sandy Adams for Congress. There's still time to help Sandy with phone calls, too. So just go to AmericanGrizzlies.com to find out how you can help, whether it be by making phone calls or financially or volunteering. Again, AmericanGrizzlies.com. 
Also, Sandy Adams appeared right here on the Palin Update a few weeks back. Log on to saranetradio.net to hear my interview with her, really an impressive candidate. Also in Florida Tuesday, the U.S. Senate primary, Colonel Mike McAllister is here. He's running for the GOP nomination. Thank you, sir, for spending a few minutes with us. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And this is obviously a very important race, and Florida is going to play a major role in both taking the Senate and the White House for the conservatives in this effort to take our country back. You've been very outspoken about your opposition to Agenda 21. First, can you tell our listeners what Agenda 21 is and why we need to stop it? Well, Agenda 21 is, in, in just so many words, uh, a one-world government concept where we will have international laws, we'll have one body of government that will be taking away our national sovereignty, our individual rights, our property rights, our guns, how we raise our kids, how we educate them. And I've been proud that the Republican National Committee has taken a stand against it. A few states have started legislation to stop it. But, yes, people need to be aware that we do not need any international laws in this country. We do not need any international powers telling us how to run the United States of America. A little bit about your background, Colonel, and why you're running. Well, the U.S. Senate is a very unique body. And in many ways, our last line of defense as a nation and as a people and as a, even for our citizens. And I am a retired colonel. I was very fortunate uh, to do some things that uh, I felt lucky to make the contribution. I'm a graduate of the Command and General Staff College and War College curriculums. I have a doctorate in business management. I was a single parent, raised a son uh, from age four till he graduated from law school. So when you look at the duties of the U.S. Senate and their involvement in national security, national defense, foreign policy, treaties and trade agreements, we feel by far we have the best credentials and resume and experience and training for that job. Can you highlight some of the other major issues important to you and why undecided voters should vote McAllister on Tuesday? Well, we need to realize that the United States is under attack everywhere we look. And when we listen to many of the debates in the media, yes, spending is a real issue. We've got to cut spending, pass a balanced budget amendment. But we've got to also recognize we're only 5% of the world, and 95% of the world doesn't live here. Yet they're stealing our inventions, our, they're stealing our research and development, our proprietary technologies. They reverse engineer it, make it with cheap labor, sell it to our customers. We've got to protect our seed, our, our investment. It's going to be very difficult to grow our economy and create jobs when the world is stealing the things that we have invested in to create future jobs. And they've built their economies, and now you've got China building carrier battle groups and tactical stealth fighters. So we just need to realize that there's many threats out there that uh, the other 95% of the world um, have to be realized and recognized and dealt with. What's your website so our listeners can take a closer look? Yeah, we have a lot of good videos on there. One of our main platforms is protecting our religious freedoms and First Amendment, our, our Second Amendment rights for no gun control, and our Tenth Amendment rights as states and citizens. But it's www.mikemcallister for Senate, and the four is the number four, dot com. Colonel, thank you for your honorable service to our country, and thanks for being with us on Saranet Radio. Thank you for the work you do, and I know your listeners are very, very dedicated and very concerned are in this fight to take our country back, and they, they have got to be applauded as well. So thank you, sir. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Mitt Romney has anointed Wisconsin Representative Paul Ryan as his vice presidential running mate. After the announcement in Norfolk, Virginia, the two men embarked on a tour of campaign battleground states vowing to defeat President Obama and repair the long, ailing U.S. economy. Governor Palin weighed in on the Ryan pick, congratulating Mitt Romney on his choice, saying we must now look to this new team, the Romney-Ryan ticket, to provide an alternate vision of an America that is fiscally responsible, strong, and prosperous. An America that understands and is proud of her exceptional place in the world and will respect those who fight to secure that exceptionalism, which includes keeping our promises to our veterans. To read everything the governor had to say about the Ryan pick, log on to her Facebook page or go over to Twitter at Sarah Palin USA. 
Perhaps Bristol Palin said it best, tweeting about Ryan after the selection was unveiled. Bristol said, praying for Mitt Romney's running mate, Paul Ryan. Then there's a link to Bristol's great blog on Pathios.com, where she says, just take a moment and realize that whomever is chosen, he is a person about to go through an ordeal that few people will ever experience. She knows this firsthand. To read all of Bristol's great work, visit Pathios.com and follow her on Twitter at Bristol's blog. Another blog entry from Bristol concerning a possible gay dance partner for her when she starts a new season of Dancing with the Stars is also up on Pathios.com. Governor Palin congratulated Bristol on the well-written and clearly thought-out piece. And speaking of Bristol's blog, we were honored this past week to be featured in Bristol's write-up about Todd Palin's new show, Stars Earn Stripes, which debuts on NBC Monday night. Bristol included links to Todd's appearance here on the Palin Update, as well as links to Sarah Net Radio. Thanks to Bristol, and thanks again to Todd Palin, and good luck to Todd on the new show. Classy as always, Governor Palin congratulated Todd Aiken on his Senate primary win in Missouri. She also thanks Sarah Steelman for her hard-fought campaign. We echo those sentiments. And I want to personally thank Sarah Steelman, who is a true patriot and a great person. And good luck to Mr. Aiken. Folks, remember, you can follow us on Twitter, at Saranet Radio. And we are now on Facebook, too. So please like Saranet Radio on Facebook. And don't forget... The Palin Update is now on demand, so just head to saranetradio.net, pick the show you want to hear, and you can listen anywhere, anytime. Well, that'll just about do it for this edition of the Palin Update on Saranet Radio. Visit saranetradio.net for continuing coverage of Governor Palin. I want to thank everyone here at Saranet Radio. Thanks to Karen Harrington. Thanks to Colonel McAllister. And thank you for listening today. Please be sure to join us next time for another edition of the Palin Update. I'm Kevin Shola. Have a pleasant day.